One of the most frequently asked questions in our channel is, what is the rapture? And how will it happen? We also often get some questions like, how many times will Jesus return? We will answer this question in this video, so be sure to watch this till the end to get all these answers. Jesus have promised a return in the New Testament, which is a final rescue of the saints, those who are saved and trust in him, and the final judgment for those who do not believe in him. So, surely, in the future Jesus Christ will return. Jesus Christ will return in his glory to take the church out of this world. The Lord will appear in the skies to assemble his own people. During this series of event, those who are dead will rise, and those who are alive will be transformed to meet the Lord. And after that comes the great tribulation which will happen here on earth. This will be followed by the great judgment and a return of the Lord to establish his kingdom. Some churches teaches that the catching up of the saints is pre-tribulation's rapture. It is known that way because there is the coming of Christ before the tribulation. At this time the true believers, cleansed in the blood of Jesus, through repentance, will be taken out and spared that time of great suffering from the Lord, at the end of age. You might also ask, what is the most important scriptures that clearly persuades everyone about this event? A scripture that tell us that Jesus will come earlier to take the church out of this world and then only return in judgment years. That scripture is Revelation 3 verse 10, which says, Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. This scripture tells us that if you repent and receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, through salvation and cleansing of sins, you will avoid eternal damnation. In other words, it says, believers would be taken out of the world before God brings a tribulation. During the rapture, our mortal bodies will be transformed. The dead in Christ will rise. And death, will have no power over us. The forces of the earth will stand still for the ascending of the children of God. The promise of God in the Bible that God will keep us from the hour of trial probably doesn't mean that we are taken out of the world, but rather that God will keep us from the faith-destroying effects of the hour of trial. He will guard us. He will protect our faith. 1 Peter 4 verse 12 says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery trial that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapters 1 and 2 explained more about the coming of the Lord, which throws a bit more light to this event. Both of these chapters talked about the coming of the Lord in a way that makes two comings to be one. Here is 2 Thessalonians 1 verses 6 to 8 which says, God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you, and give relief to you who are troubled, and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven, in blazing fire with his powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God, and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. The Holy Bible is clear about the coming of the Lord. Apostle Paul illustrates the return of the Lord to give relief to believers. And then, to give affliction to unbelievers, all in one coming. He explained this as a single return of the Lord, to protect us from affliction at the same time as a judgment for unbelievers. So, according to the book of Thessalonians, these are the two events that are going to happen. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven, with his mighty angels in flaming fire, he will inflict retribution on those who do not accept Christ, which are the sinners who refuse salvation, and also on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus.
That explanation clearly illustrates that Christ is coming again. He will return in his glory, and when he comes, he will repay unbelievers with affliction, and he will grant relief to believers. So the answer to our question is that the two events will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven. So this is one coming of Christ, not two. Now we have understood that. Is it fair to say the day of the Lord is here? Paul is arguing that can't be because, although the signs are here, but the day of the Lord is not here yet, and will not come unless the rebellion comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, which is the son of destruction. In the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 which says, Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled, or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by word of mouth or by letter asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Paul also mentioned in the scriptures with this warning, let no one deceive you in any way. This means that there will be false teachers and interpreters of the scriptures. This is not to say that most of them are wrong, but we must be aware of those who tell us otherwise. The truth is, the rapture is coming and we must be ready. Furthermore, in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8 which says, And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth, and destroy by the splendor of his coming. So, there is one coming according to Paul. And it hasn't happened yet, because the Antichrist which is the man of lawlessness has not been revealed yet. The second coming will happen when the Antichrist is revealed. It is a time when most accounts in the Holy Bible will be fulfilled. Now what are the specific activities contained in the rapture you might ask? This is the best part of this entire teaching. We have already talked about it. But here is a Bible detail. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Now that we understood the activities of the rapture, we must expect that we believers will indeed rise in our transformed body to meet the Lord in the air. And then we will be with the Lord in his triumphant entry. My dear brethren, we cannot wait for Jesus to appear in the clouds. It will be like a great band of welcoming. And we will come with him to his established judgment and authority. How beautiful this will be. Come, Lord Jesus. Come take your people home.